Hey everyone, Victor is here and in this video I want to talk about the imine and inamine hydrolysis. If you haven't seen my video on imine and inamine formation, you might want to start there because this process that we are going to be discussing in this video is literally the opposite. We are going to be taking our imines and inamines and we are going to be hydrolyzing them back to the corresponding carbonyls and amines. So without any further ado, let's jump into our first reaction the imine hydrolysis. For the simplicity's sake in my reactions here, I'm going to be using this H3O+, which is just a generic abbreviation for aqueous solution of some sort of acid. Instead of this H3O+, over here, you might as well see something like water and sulfuric acid, or maybe water and tazilic acid, or even maybe water and HCl, hydrochloric acid. The nature of the acid is completely irrelevant. All of them are going to be giving us our uh, H3O+, and that what we are going to be using for this reaction. So, to make it a little bit easier to show the first step in this mechanism, I'm going to go ahead and I will redraw my H3O+, into this form H and uh, H2O+, and I'm going to show that the first step here is going to be the proton transfer, and as a result of this proton transfer, we are going to get our protonated aminium ion. Now, this aminium ion is fairly electrophilic, so it is going to react with nucleophiles that we have in our solution, and the only reasonable nucleophile that we have is going to be water. So, I'm going to draw my water molecule here, and I will show that there is a nucleophilic attack from water onto the electrophilic carbon of this aminium ion, which, after this nucleophilic attack, going to give us the following tetrahedral intermediate. Now, the next thing that we are going to see in this reaction is going to be a proton transfer. It might be very tempting to draw a proton transfer like so, where we do it basically intramolecularly, but like I have explained in many of my tutorials, that is an unlikely scenario, because that would require you to have a one, two, three, four member transition state, and those are not particularly common in simple proton transfers of this sort. So, better than uh, writing something like that, it would be better if we actually use a chaperone. So, instead of drawing this reaction intramolecularly, I'm going to bring in the water molecule and H3O+, and I'm going to show that in one case, or rather I should say in one step, water is going to be acting as a base deprotonating our oxygen, and our H3O+, our oxonium ion, that one is going to be protonating the nitrogen, giving us the next intermediate. Now, the nitrogen is protonated and oxygen is deprotonated. From the perspective of which step is likely to happen first, most likely we are going to see the deprotonation first, and then we are going to protonate our amine in the next step. So, if you wanted to draw this mechanism step by step instead of combining it like what I have done here, uh, you would draw deprotonation first, and then you would uh, protonate that nitrogen. Now, once we have this structure where the nitrogen is protonated, this part of the molecule essentially acts as a leaving group, so we are going to have an assisted ionization where the electron pair on the oxygen will help kick that nitrogen out, giving us the following uh, intermediates. Here we have an amine and we have a protonated oxygen of the carbonyl. Amine is, well, basic, and the protonated uh, oxygen of the carbonyl, that species is pretty acidic, so we are immediately going to have an acid-base reaction between those, where the nitrogen is going to grab this proton, deprotonate our carbonyl, giving us our final products looking like so. And an important thing here to keep in mind is that we are going to be forming this protonated amine as our final product, because we are working in acidic conditions, and amines, being bases, are going to get protonated. But now, since the amine is protonated, this species is no longer 
nucleophilic, which means that the reverse reaction reformation of our imine is not going to be possible, and we can easily separate our carbonyl from our protonated amine. So you can kind of think about the last step, last proton transfer in this reaction, as sort of like a driving force for this reaction. Everything up to this point was somewhat reversible, but this last step has a ridiculously large uh, equilibrium constant, so talking about the last step as an equilibrium is kind of silly, it's not really an equilibrium, so, so once we hop through this step, that's it, there is no going back. Also, if you pull out your nodes from the imine formation, you will see that we are going through all the same steps and all the same intermediates, but literally in the opposite direction. So if you know one mechanism, it's really easy to go through the steps and figure out the opposite mechanism if you need to, or if you forgot one of those directions. And while working through the mechanism of these reactions is kind of cool, there is a simple shortcut that will allow you to predict the products of your reaction reactions quickly and reliably. So let's look at this reaction. I have my imine and I'm doing my hydrolysis reaction. Now, in order to predict the products of this hydrolysis, I will remember that essentially what I'm doing here, I'm breaking a carbon-nitrogen double bond. So my nitrogen is going to end up being NH2 and the carbon that is connected to the nitrogen right now, that is going to become my carbonyl. So, in order to predict my products right away without going through the entire mechanism, what I would have to do is essentially draw the left side of my molecule up to the nitrogen. So, I have one, two, three, four carbons on the left and the nitrogen. So, the way it's going to look, I will show two, three, four carbons and then I have my nitrogen, and instead of just leaving it at this naked nitrogen, I'm going to convert that into NH2, so that is going to be my amine before we finish the protonation part. Now, the next thing is going to be my carbonyl, which in this case is the right side of the molecule. So likewise, I'm going to redraw that, and I'm going to show that that carbon which used to be connected to the nitrogen, now that is a carbonyl. And of course, since we are still working in the acidic conditions, remember that unless your instructor is fine, you're showing everything being neutral, we should say that instead of NH2, we actually have NH3+, plus because nitrogen is going to be protonated. So for the purposes of this video, I am going to keep it as NH3+, plus rather than NH2. So if we look at a couple of examples here, here is my first example. I have a compound, it is an imine, I will identify my C and double bond, which is right here, so that part is what I'm going to be breaking up. The nitrogen that I have on the bottom here is going to become my NH3+, so I'm going to indicate for myself that that is going to be NH3+, plus connected to the rest of the molecule, and the carbon to where my nitrogen is connected, that one is going to become a carbonyl. So in order to draw my products, uh, here I will start by drawing my carbonyl, so I will show my four carbon skeleton, and then I have my CO double bond, and similarly for my nitrogen containing part, so I have my nitrogen over here, I'm going to say that that is NH3 plus, and now I'm just going to draw the rest of the molecule, so I will show that extra carbon that I have over there, then the aromatic ring, and I have my products. And of course, since everybody loves the rings, I had to do this cyclic example here as well. The idea, however, is exactly the same. We have our C and double bond, we are going to break C and double bond, this part of the molecule becomes the carbonyl, this part of the molecule becomes our NH3+, so fairly simple. However, here we got to keep in mind that since we are cutting through this cycle, in this case we are not going to be forming two products, rather we are going to be forming one long molecule, because even though we are cutting through that C and double bond, the rest of the molecule is going to stay as is, it's going to stay combined, we are not breaking any other bonds, so I'm going to number my molecule starting from the carbon, which eventually going to become my carbonyl, so let's say that is my carbon number one, then I have carbon number two, carbon number three with the methyl group, 
carbon number four, carbon number five, and atom number six is going to be my nitrogen over here. So I can draw that first kind of ugly, preserving the structure as much as I can. So we've got our carbonyl over here, we've got our NH3 plus like so, and my atoms are one, two, three, four, five, and nitrogen is the atom number six. Or if I wanted to stretch that molecule and uh, redraw it in a more linear form, I would end up with the following structure where my atoms one, two, three, four, five, and six are right over there. And of course, Shortcuts are awesome, but make sure you can draw the actual mechanism for both of these examples, actually for all three examples that I have here on the page. Make sure that you can go back and draw a step-by-step -step mechanism showing how we actually got from the starting material all the way to our final product. But in the meantime, I'm going to move to the enamine hydrolysis. So when it comes to the enamines, that functional group has a nitrogen atom next to a double bond. So we don't have a CN double bond, but we have a carbon-carbon double bond right next to a nitrogen. Or you can think uh, that the nitrogen is sitting on the double bond, whatever makes more sense. However, mechanistically speaking, the reaction is going to be extremely similar to what we have just seen with the imine hydrolysis. So like in the previous case, I'm going to redraw my H3O+, and the important thing here is that we are no longer going to be protonating nitrogen, but rather we are actually going to be protonating our double bond. So the proper curved arrows here would be we start with the nitrogen, but then the electrons of the double bond going to reach out and grab the proton from our H3O+, giving us the following intermediate. Notice that the hydrogen, or I should say proton, that I have just added, let's highlight that guy in green like that, that green proton is sitting right over here in our molecule, and that carbon already had a hydrogen on it to begin with, so that hydrogen is still there. So basically it looks like as if our double bond just moved one space, but in reality we have added a proton to our molecule. Now from this point the mechanism is pretty much exactly what we have seen a moment ago. We have this aluminium ion over here, CN double bond with a plus charge, which is fairly electric Electrophilic, so we're going to bring our nucleophile, which is a water molecule in this case again, and we're going to show the nucleophilic attack from water onto the electrophilic carbon, moving electrons like so, and as a result of this nucleophilic attack, we're going to get the following intermediate, where we have the protonated oxygen and neutral nitrogen. Now, like in the previous case, it might be tempting to do the intramolecular attack, where you go from nitrogen and just snatch that proton like that, again, uh, that is an unlikely scenario, although some instructors do show it this way, so if your instructor does show it like that, I guess you can go with that. But I am going to be using my H3O plus and H2O, so water comes in and it's going to pull that proton off from my oxygen, and H3O plus is going to come in and the nitrogen is going to get the proton from that H3O+, plus, like so. And like I've mentioned for the previous mechanism, most likely scenario here is that deprotonation is going to be your step number one, and reprotonation is going to be step number two, if you are drawing that in a step-by-step -step fashion. But when those uh, proton transfers are all done, we are going to get the following intermediate, and from there, like in the previous case, the nitrogen-containing part this part of our molecule over here going to serve as our living group. So oxygen is going to help that nitrogen dissociate like so, and as a result of this living group dissociation, we are going to get two intermediates. We have a uh, neutral amine protonated aldehyde in this case, so our amine is going to immediately grab the proton 
from our protonated carbonyl, giving us the final products, butanol and dimethyl ammonium uh, salt in this particular case. And just like in the previous mechanism, the driving force here is the fact that the amine that you are forming is going to be protonated, which is not a nucleophilic species, so the reaction is not likely to reverse. So as you can see, the mechanism is pretty much the exact same mechanism that we have seen a moment ago, with the only slight difference is that uh, now the first step is a little bit different from what we have seen in the E mean hydrolysis. And of course, in this case, just like in the previous case, we do have a shortcut. Now, in this case, the shortcut implementation is going to be a little bit more challenging. First of all, we are going to be looking at the CN bond, but in this case, it's going to be a CN single bond that is right next to our carbon-carbon double bond. So, we are going to be breaking this bond. The nitrogen, like in the previous case, is going to get a couple of hydrogens, so that's going to become an NH2 group. The carbon, which is connected to the nitrogen, that one is going to become our carbonyl. And importantly here, we are not going to be preserving the double bond here. So the other carbon that we have uh, on that carbon-carbon double bond, that carbon is going to become a CH2 group. So we're going to be adding an extra hydrogen onto that uh, side carbon, if you want to think about that way. Which means that when I'm drawing my final products in this case, I'm going to start with the top of my molecule, which is going to become a carbonyl. So the mid carbon over here is going to be the carbonyl. And the one on the right side, see this guy, that is now a CH2 group. So I no longer have a double bond there. The bottom of my molecule, I have my nitrogen. I have the ethyl group number once, ethyl group number twice, and we have a couple of hydrogens on my nitrogen, so that is a positively charged ammonium salt like that. So here is another example. In this case, like in the previous case, we are breaking this carbon-nitrogen bond. The nitrogen becomes our NH2 species with a plus. The carbon connected to the nitrogen, that becomes the carbonyl and the carbon of the other side of the double bond, that one becomes a CH2 group. So if I draw my products in this case, here on the left side, I have my nitrogen containing parts. So I will show nitrogen with, the both, uh, with both hydrogens on it, plus charge. And the one on the right, that one now has a carbonyl, and the carbon which used to be a part of the double bond, now that carbon has a couple of hydrogens, so that is a CH2 group. And here is another example, cyclic, of course, since everybody loves it so much. So we are again breaking a carbon-nitrogen bond. In this case, nitrogen becomes our NH2+. Again, the left side the carbon of the uh, molecule that is directly connected to our nitrogen, that is going to be our carbonyl. The next carbon is going to become a CH2 group. And in this case, because this is a cyclic compound, similar to the example that I did for the imine hydrolysis, we'll have to remember that instead of making two molecules, we are going to make one molecule while all of that is interconnected together, so we are breaking carbon-nitrogen bond, but we are not breaking any other bonds. So if I wanted to number my atoms, I will start with the carbon where the carbonyl is going to be, so it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and let's say this methyl group over here is going to be our carbon number 9. So if I were to draw my product, I will first draw it to preserve the structure as much as possible. I would draw kind of like, you know, cyclic-ish looking structure, like so. I will show that this is my NH2. I will show my plus on the nitrogen like that. So my atoms are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Nitrogen is atom number 6. 
7, 8 and 9, so it doesn't look like I've lost anything here. And if I wanted to open up my molecule and draw it in a more linear fashion, I would have a structure looking like so, where I've also numbered my carbon to make sure that I haven't lost anything in a way. So as you can see, the hydrolysis of amines and enamines is just as simple of a mechanism as their formation. It's a little bit of a longer mechanism, but for as long as you understand the overall pattern for the mechanism, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. And of course, in order to make sure that you really know those mechanisms well, go and do a ton of practice because these types of mechanisms are very frequent guests on the exams and I pretty much see them all the time. It's always going to be either formation or hydrolysis of one of those guys, so make sure that you do know those mechanisms very well. And as always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, boop the like button if you found this video useful and subscribe for more and I will see you next time!